There's always that series from early YouTube. Rough, crude, and unfinished in all regards. This is one of those that series. The actual series has basically nothing to do with this channel's content. It is as polar opposite to this video as you can get. A video game series, a pure product of early YouTube culture, that was created before there were any genre labels on YouTube. RT Sharpshooters, The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk, or simply Sow for short, it's still up on YouTube. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk displays that not-so-sweet, not-so-subtle art of the early YouTube series. Sao was not remarkable or widely influential at all, only to yours truly. After more than a decade, the only impact it has generated is a few persistent stray comments, and, obviously, this video about it. The one playing right now. Sao was typical of early YouTube, or video sharing sites in general, and predating before anyone had much of an idea of what they were doing. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk is so much an example of that time, but also considerably outside of that time. A sort of Rosetta Stone for that internet. A cipher to translate what was, what is, and what could have been. Things that were, and things that never made it. Just look at RT Sharpshooter's favorites and his subscription box. Today, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk looks particularly of its time in 240p wonder. Okay, later episodes are in 360 and even 480, but even for the mid-2000s, it was not outstanding in the visuals department. It strided that line between gameplay, machinima, gameplay montage, and even some AMV influence was in there. Once one accepts that 2007 level production, and straight up taking jokes from other sources, there is an interesting development going on underneath it all, in a sort of embryonic, developing way. It helps to have familiarity with the source material, Resident Evil 4, to appreciate it, but it's not that important. Sao's stripes are in video game parody series, but the actual series has become so divorced from the source material, in a 2007 internet humor sort of way, it barely matters to the content. It was a sardonic, nonsense humor, sort of naive, that is hard to find today. Also, before anyone asks, to play as Hunk in story mode, you need an action replay max and the proper code, which you can find online. Resident Evil 4 is definitely a fun video game, and its impact on the overall series is pretty well known by now. Released on the GameCube and PS2 in 2005, Resident Evil 4 made the full jump to action horror for the previously survival horror-based Resident Evil franchise. Signs were already there at Resident Evil 3, arguably even as early as 2, but the return of Leon S. Kennedy to series spotlight moved the focus from survival due to resource scarcity to more survival due to action scenes and gunplay. 
Earlier prototypes of Resident Evil 4 originally shown a more psychological, supernatural bent to the game, but the actual release of the game committed to full-on action with a Save the President's Daughter storyline. Obviously, there are a lot of developmental reasons for this, but this is not the place to talk about it, and it's been covered better in other videos. The fact is, Resident Evil 4 is a classic by now. Why does all that matter, though? It matters because of ease of access, appeal, and internet culture. RE4 sold a lot of copies, had a lot of fans, and was a mainstay on the internet from 2005 to at least 2009. Post Resident Evil 4, there was a sort of Resident Evil trend online, an influx of activity to RE digital content slash OC. This crescendoed about 2008-2009 with the release of Resident Evil 5. RE4 heavily defined its early waves though. It came at what now most consider a particularly awkward era online. It could be considered around the rise of DeviantArt to prominence, or the DeviantArt era, which coincided with second generation YouTube content. It is somewhat endearing now, but there are obvious marks of the culture relating to everything produced during this period. The peak and decline of early online video game parody content, a la Mario eats a mushroom and gets high, ha 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 ha, the development of a sort of a westernized anime style, and the cultivation of humor defined by things like Invader Zim, which produced jokes such as, Roar, it means I love you in dinosaur. Random XD would be a concise summation, but it is also somewhat reductive to the topic. A subsection of users would call it cringe, but a proper name would be something more like Roar Wave. The wave of Resident Evil 4's popularity then collided with the concussion of Roar Wave on mid 2000s 240p to 360p YouTube, YouTube acting as a digital mixing pot for these two cultural strands. On this video sharing website, these two aesthetics were reconciled into content. Like Bleach and Ammonia, this fusion created a potent mixture which many may now consider to be as noxious as chlorine gas, but it was an irrefutably strong mixture. Outside those that preferred black humor and testing boundaries, video game parodies on YouTube often fell under the influence of Roar Wave, or a sort of random XD sort of humor. There were a spectrum of intermediaries. Both ends of that spectrum could use RE4 as an accessible game and shared touchstone. Most Resident Evil 4 parodies, or spoofs as they were called at the time, often fell into that middle ground. It was and is impossible to generalize the cluttering of Resident Evil 4 parodies which once, and still do like sedimentary artifacts, fill YouTube's depths. There were one-off joke videos, longer series, and other parodies that snowballed into unique things with some common traits. Joke theft or references to one another was incredibly common as well, but usually that was because of the fanbase. A common joke was Ashley Graham was annoying since she made nearly the entire game, beside brief segments, an escort mission. Are you about finished? Let's just go. Another obsession was with, in general, modding slash glitching in Resident Evil fans' favorite security officer, Hunk, into the main campaign. He was only playable in free play mercenary mode originally. The only issue was the game, if playable after the first house section, would crash if the glitched in hunk used any other weapon beside his TMP. There was an obsession with Mr. Death, otherwise known as Hunk. His silent character, intimidating combat style, and scarcity of information about the character gave him a mystique that appealed to the sensibilities of that era. That bridges into the main point here, the super awesome adventures of Hunk, or Sao pronounced something like that. Checking the RT Sharpshooter channel today, it is dead and has been dead for more than a decade. It rests inactive with slightly more than 2,000 subscribers and 1.2 million views. It is also buried by more than 10 years of algorithm changes and irrelevancy. Only the exact name and series will usually return any watchable results when searched. And yet, it lives. Sao still persists after copyright and purges. RT Sharpshooter was the creator of the super awesome adventures of Hunk, but there is not much that can be said about RT, being inactive under this username for years. It was definitely an early YouTube channel. A summation of him can be guessed by videos on the channel itself. Video games, Smash Bros, 
anime, Naruto, and YouTube poop-derived remix content. There was a focus on Resident Evil 4 after the success of the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk, which regularly got thousands of views, but RT's backup channel like RT Overlord had content more typical of that era. What can be guessed of the psychological profile built by these videos on the channel is that RT was a totally typical user of the time, with typical interests for the time. Video games, anime, and such. The only deep lore is he seemed to have lived in Canada. This will be slightly funny when examining some of the jokes later on, because they're jokes about George Bush. RT also had a game trailers and maybe a screw attack account, but both are gone due to internet decay and archives of the user pages are non-existent. Surprisingly, RT Sharpshooter's Destructoid blog does still exist, being inactive since 2010, but it shows he had an interest in the Sengaku Basara series. This blog is not relevant right now, but it is an important clue to RT Sharpshooter. What about the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk, or Sao then, RT Sharpshooter's claim to fame? It was not an independent project. Outright, RT credits a co-writer who went by Hyconophysterosticate, who will be called Hycon for simplicity. Hycon had a YouTube channel at some point, if comments are to be believed, but it appears to have been renamed. This will come up again later. If one pays close enough attention to the style of jokes in Sao, one will notice there are definitely two writers with two separate voices, but who wrote what is unclear. Sir, the Illuminados have located our intruder. Splendid, Demetrius. Actually, my name's Tom. Yeah, that's nice, Bob, but I'm nearing the completion of my science project. It is only obvious there are two comedic styles in play. For how little information there is left on RT Sharpshooter, there is even less on Hycon. As said, the full username barely returns any results, even with digging. The only other thing of interest about Hycon was he did create the first intro for the series. The original intro used Tumblr's Lost Sense of the Cosmic, then the opening chords of Stairway to Heaven, mixed with Lordy's Not the Nicest Guy, then finally setting on the Foo Fighters' The Pretender for the final few episodes. Both RT and Hycon are credited at the start of every episode, so this was a collaboration from beginning to end. There are technically 10 episodes in the series, alongside a trailer and a Halloween special. All of them were uploaded between the trailer, which uses a paranoid cover by Megadeth, on July 18th, 2007, then the last episode was uploaded August 18th, 2009, with RT's last update on the channel being on September 29th, 2009. A majority of the episodes were uploaded in 2007, so it technically ran about three years, but just barely. So what is the purpose of all this roundabout? So, in retrospect, is a petrified artifact of early YouTube, an attempt to create a cohesive episodic series on YouTube when the idea of how to do so was still developing. Mentos, the fresh maker. It is clear the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was heavily influenced by then contemporary Resident Evil spoofs, which RT also produced, but it is also a product of pure YouTube culture and impulse an attempt to messily refine certain ideas into a solid, ridiculous whole. Sao was produced before OSA YouTube content had many definite labels, but as the series developed at a critical moment on YouTube, there are a few contemporary influences with it to earmark. Another bountiful harvest. Ashley, get down! Just farmers. Just farmers, my ass. Why do you think they had over 10 pounds of hay and are carrying around pitchforks and sickles? Because they're farmers? You really are dumb. One can then notice the influence of four YouTube genres, for lack of a better term, in the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk before they solidify it into their current states. Gameplay montages, YouTube poops, mind series, and a bridge series. The style of gameplay montage is the most basic element of the series being based on a video game. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk's presentation ultimately grew out of uploading cool gameplay or mod compilations to YouTube. I mean, that is why Hunk is the main character. 
As mentioned, Resident Evil fans are obsessed with playing as him in RE4 and modding him into the main game. This also crossed with elements of machinima, as in using gameplay to tell a unique story, but the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was more a collection of gameplay clips. This categorization also included music gameplay montages using rock and metal. Parts of some episodes of the series, the series' main filler really, are montages slash sped up gameplay mixed with copyrighted music, because it's cool. It does get a little egregious when most of one episode is a boss fight mixed with a metal song. Oh hey hunk, what's going on? I'm on an island and there's two aggressive guys in leather looking at me. I think I'm in a gay bar. Another cultural stem the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk grew from was the aptly named randomness of the YouTube poops. The unofficial official name for humorous cultural remixes on YouTube. There isn't a very good uh, academic or literary description of what exactly YouTube poops are, but you know them when you see them. The influence of YouTube poop comes more on RT and Hikon's humor, but also shows in the series editing. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk enjoys random interjections and clips for humorous emphasis. Aw, uh, being free is boring. OMG, a crane game! But how do I use it? We would like to play. But sentence mixing is never used in it. RT largely voices all the characters, outside audio from the original game. The first few episodes of Sao are a menagerie of mid-2000s internet references without much sense or structure. It becomes grating at certain points, to current senses of humor. Is your name Robert G. Babcock? Who the f is this? Joe Mama! But is more or less dropped once the series developed their real identity. The YouTube poop gene always remained in the series' editing DNA, though. There are certain popular YouTube poop clefts that appear in Sao that would make one think it is a YouTube poop, but it's a distant cousin, if anything. One to note is that clips from Zelda CDI are used. Gee, it sure is boring around here. My boy. Which are a definitive element of YouTube poop culture, thus connecting Sao to the YouTube poops of the time. Hello there, strangers. What can I do for you today? What do you sell? <coughs> <coughs> Lamp oil, rope, bombs. You want it? If I had rope, I could use Ashley as bait to wear on those monk freaks. One debatable element is the influence of what could be called Mine series on the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk. The originator of the Mines, or Mine series, is the classic Freeman's Mind by Ross Scott slash Accursed Farms. Mine series are usually defined by the creator slash narrator taking on the role of the character to commentate on the world within the game usually in an ironic or sardonic manner. If I was in charge and one man was killing every single soldier I sent to kill him, I would try something else. Hell, I could be a general. I have enough combat experience by now. I'm gonna sing about it. They can't stop me. <clears throat> I am the very model of a modern major general. Life information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England and I quote the fights historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categorical. I'm very well at 22 with Midas Mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. I bought my new real theorem, I'm teaming with a lot of news. With many cheerful facts about the square of the hypotenuse. WHERE'S MY CHORUS?! Though it's important to remark that Mind series are not straight up parodies. Freeman's Mind would go on to inspire many more, often incomplete, Mind series. The interesting thing is the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was contemporary with the first few episodes of Freeman's Mind, technically predating them if I have my dates right. It is unclear if doubtful RT Sharpshooter was even aware of Freeman's Mind. Bad dog. Bad dog! I'm gonna need help if I'm gonna get out of this maze. But Mind series, at least Freeman's Mind, do not rely on much else besides gameplay, acting, and commentating. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk is more a redux of the RE4 main storyline. It also features more obvious editing than a Mind series usually would. Their presentation is similar enough to remark upon the similarities, though. Freeman's Mind, though, is more straightforward, while the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk is more absurd, which means Sao cannot be classified as a Mind series but take it as an asterisk to the entire period. 
I know, I'm pretty awesome. When looking at Sao's storytelling, one may notice the structural similarities to an abridged series, in internet terms, not literary terms. An abridged series is in humorously rewriting and abridging a piece of media story to shorten it for humorous effect. The funny element comes in making it a parody of itself. The most popular example of the genre, and likely its creator in internet terms, is Lil Karibo's Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series. The term abridged series has become its own genre. This was most likely simple chance and serendipity though. An abridged series became a catch-all term for a certain type of widespread parody that was already common, in writing at least, before RT Sharpshooter or Little Kribo. The thing about abridged series is copyright issues have become a common problem for series like Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged Series, as what abridged series did differently online was bring the idea to YouTube or video sharing sites. People with similar senses of humor, for 2007 and later, naturally gravitated toward this format. When it was fresh, the concept had a novel appeal with the familiar slash popular media one could easily parody or abridge. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk is a parody retelling of Resident Evil 4, at least by the later episodes. If one does not know what RE4 is, one will be slightly lost. I'll just shoot at it. Now, you're probably wondering how Hunk's gonna get out of this one. Well, it's a video game, stupid. So, as mentioned before, it's more of a redux than an outright abridged series, but as mentioned with the Mind series, similar enough, so consider it an asterisk. Reminder, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk existed before three of these terms were in common use, excepting YouTube Poop, but it was contemporary with most of their origins, i.e. Freeman's Mind and Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series. It is an interesting example of a series where one can see the gestures of four genres developing. The editing, the humor, the presentation, and the rough nature, how videos were presented at the time. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk developed in a time when a lot of ideas were in competition for attention online. Certain elements would die off over time, and others would come to prominence post-2007. Simple internet evolution. The current internet culture is downstream from those ideas and presentations that survived, basically the videos that got popular enough to be popular. There is a medieval manuscript quality to Sao for YouTube history. One can read the many markings in what came before in its images, if one cares enough to. Nuking Spain is not going to help us. That is not to say the super awesome adventures of Hunk was an unheralded critical masterpiece. But it had a dynamic sense of force, vitality, life, of two people doing something new to them personally on the internet. Well, he will be missed. Uh, actually, I'm still alive. I'll have to deliver the bad news to his family. Uh, I'm pinned down by the road, as if you just helped pull me out. Uh, yep, definitely dead. I should probably leave as soon as possible. No time to check for survivors. Man, I gotta stop drinking on the job. The series developed alongside RT and Hikon's editing skills and their own senses of humor. The first episode, for example, does not even have audio due to copyright issues with the music. From beginning to end, the videos have an obvious element of messing around. Episode 4, for example, has this random, animated, barely, segment, probably made in Microsoft Paint. It is the only segment in that style in the entire series, and is never referenced slash repeated again. It was clear they wanted to try it, so they threw it into the episode. Sao never loses that early YouTube feel, or appears limited by its limitations, only upload quality, which is totally forgivable. The series is, after all, a mixture of cutscenes and RT Sharpshooter screen recordings. When the screen goes black, the viewer can briefly see RT's room, shooting the TV with an actual camera, a familiar strategy for those in the know. Errors abound. There are even a few lines where it sounds like RT forgot to put a voice filter on for Hunk. Uh, nice doggy? It's, uh, it's endearing. Also, do not forget the YouTube classic of males doing bad female impressions. Oh, and if it's of any concern, the island is gonna get nuked in an hour. It's what? Why didn't you tell me? You didn't ask me. 
Am I supposed to casually fucking bring something up like, Oh, hey, nice to see ya. Oh, and am I gonna get nuked today? Okay, I see your point. Ah, that's music to the ears. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was not always original. The first few episodes suffer a lot from being a medley of jokes stolen from other shows slash sources. Family Guy and South Park are the two most common. Remember, 2007. RT slash Hikon openly admit this at certain points though, so it's not a surprise. This is probably due also to how RT Sharpshooter's prototype of Sao was Resident Evil Spoof 4 Part 2, do not ask where Part 1 went, which was a mixture of South Park audio and Resident Evil 4. Other jokes are blandly typical of their era. There is an Xbox fanboys joke, for example, to show how 2007 this web series was. Are, are console wars still a thing? There are several George Bush jokes, remember 2007. Let this stand as an example that 90% of political jokes will date your jokes to a very specific time period. Though, to give Sal credit, RT and Hikon did come up with one good sort of Bush joke though. That's one rude little bastard! Did you listen to him? He's gonna kill us! And we have no idea how to get around this castle. I can get my dad to come and- Nuking Spain is not going to help us. Oh! There's also a Honeymooners reference, but okay, given that one because everyone references the Honeymooners. Also, because I like the Honeymooners. One of these days, Ashley! One of these days! Remind me to change my number. Even with these growing pains, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was able to retain an audience on YouTube. Enough of an audience to have RT and Hikon make consistent episodes for about a year. So, that was a pretty consistent show on YouTube for the period. Back then, the online public was hungry for any humorous content with the barest sense of a structured form. Though the uploads on other websites, like game trailers, are lost, the uploads on YouTube have hundreds of thousands of views. True, the view counts decreased as the series went on, as is true of any visual media, especially on YouTube, but Sao does not truly develop an independent identity until around episode 4 or 5. The last few episodes were uploaded irregularly, but the show showed promise of cohering into a greater whole. The kinks were worked out, and a concrete sense of humor was being applied to the series. There is unique and original content to be appreciated in it, even in this later retrospect alone. Some of these jokes are dated and verge on the random XD type popular in the era, that type that has aged like milk. Other jokes have aged like fine wine though. Where am I? Large room, pit of lava, it's the smell of something burning. Oh my god, I'm in hell! That or California. Okay, okay, let's lay off California for a little bit. There is one joke from the period that has aged pretty well, and is pretty representative of jokes popular in the era. You! Yes! We are responsible for nearly every video game movie ever made. Resident Evil, Super Mario Bros, Doom, Mortal Kombat, Blood Rain, Dead or Alive, you name it, we made it. Or should I say... Butchered. You fucking bastard. Then why the hell do you need Ashley? She can't act. Acting? <laughs> Metroid will be the first video game movie to have no dialogue at all. All she'll do is run around, shoot things, and wear spandex at some point. Wait. But that sounds exactly like Metroid. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Baba! No! True, this joke does drag on a little long, and it would be funnier if it was cut down to a more structured delivery, but this is a YouTube series from 2007-2008. Other jokes show there really was interesting experimentation going on with the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk. Take this one, for example, which feels almost too avant-garde and meta for a YouTube video from 2007. Now, you're probably wondering how Hunk's gonna get out of this one.
Well, it's a video game, stupid. Yes, that was presumably RT Sharpshooter in the room. This is one of the earliest meta jokes I first remember really understanding on the internet. It is one of the most memorable jokes from the entire series, and probably the reason I remember the series, thus the reason why this video exists. Maybe it is because that is when the series first began to develop an independent identity. The first four or five episodes are the usual YouTube fare for 2007, but by episode six, the writing and humor comes into its own. The Super Awesome Adventures of Honk had a definite affection or cadence in its comedic identity. What the fuck? One habit was censoring fuck, even though one could swear up and down on YouTube during the period. Several uncensored F-words do slip by at certain moments, so maybe it was intended to imitate broadcast TV, but RT or Hikon just forgot to bleep them out? Hunk was also played particularly straight in the videos. He is the closest one can get to a straight man, in a comedic sense, in a YouTube comedy video of that era. That is a credit to RT and Hikon's writings for the series. Sao has a noticeably large amount of continuity and consistency for a video game parody series. There are prank call jokes and references to Pizza Hut that appear throughout the series. Hell, I think it's a Pizza Hut joke that closes the series. I swear to God, when I find out who f Hunk, it's me. Oh. Then there was Dance Dance Revolution. If any of this is interesting, if only in a digital archaeology sense, or maybe you're a Zoomer who thinks YouTube has always consisted of hour-long video essays, I would recommend taking a look at what exists of the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk on RT Sharpshooter's channel. So, by episode 8, episode 7 was probably one of the weaker ones, was shaping up to be a real series that could have stuck around. Oh, well, after that thing with Salazar and the Vertigo, I've kind of gotten hooked on this. Now shut up! I'll be damned if I don't get a double A rank because of you. It was simply raw material that needed more refinement, had it been finished. Even after more than a decade, the channel is still getting both views and comments, mostly from people nostalgic for this obscure little series. Since 2009 though, the RT Sharpshooter channel has been inactive. Here is where it must be acknowledged. The Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk is an unfinished series. People keep returning, in the vague hope, after more than a decade, that maybe one day, the final episode will appear. But it's mostly a sort of joke in itself. Where's the next episode, RT? It's 2009, girly. The last episode was in 2008. Your dad isn't president anymore. What was the fate of the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk? It has been 13 years. Thirteen long years. Episode 11 of the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk will, admittedly, likely never exist. Perhaps it is better that way. The series saw a slow release schedule post-2007. A majority of Sao's episodes have been released in the calendar year of 2007. Episode 8 was released on December 17th, 2007, then Episode 9 on February 3rd, 2008, then Episode 10 on... August 18th, 2009. Then, uh, Killzone 2 Garza Trapped in the Stairs on September 26, 2009. Then, nothing more. Well, technically speaking, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk playlist was last updated on August 17th, 2012, which is later than most would expect. But if it was RT Sharpshooter, it was the last activity on the channel. RT's two other channels, RT Overlord and RT Sharpshotter, remained inactive as well. RT's channel description does list Sao Episode 11 as partly done, though this was obviously never completed. One of RT's last videos, RT Sharpshooter's September Update, from September 26, 2009, also mentions the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk, Episode 11, was in production. It says it was delayed due to two copyright strikes on the channel, and RT getting wisdom teeth removed. Properly enough, Episode 10, technically the last episode of the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk, acknowledges that slow release schedule, and ends, once again properly enough, with a Pizza Hut joke. But the caller ID says Pizza Hut. 
there is a noticeable difference in episode 10's description when compared to the other episodes of the series. Unlike the rest, there is no episode title, episode summary, teaser, or even listed honors. Remember when YouTube had rewards? Of course, this was uploaded in 2009, so those may have been removed by then. This all suggests RT and Hikon were rather tired of the series by 2009. Perhaps they simply ran out of ideas. Or did RT die due to those wisdom teeth? Eh, likely not. As already noted, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk playlist was maintained until 2012, though that may have been automated YouTube shenanigans. Nothing after that though. RT's Destructoid blog was maintained until 2010 too, and his last post being on August 25th, 2010, with a few scattered comments. This is more than enough proof RT was knocking around post-2009. The channel's My Top Favorites was even last updated on April 18th, 2021. That was likely just YouTube purging videos though. The unremarked end of Sao was most likely RT wanting distance from the username and series. RT's Destructoid blog makes no mention of the series, for example. Though there was, and may still be, an RT sharpshooter running around on the PSN network. The series slowly sunk into the darkness of the YouTube algorithm, and RT vanished. Except, well, you know me. I think I know where RT is. That is a very tentative think, though. RT is currently going by another username. I have no idea how to reach out, though, as the accounts are mostly private but all, or at least one, have been active recently. The username will not be divulged here, because I don't want this to be construed as a threat, and simply because it has been so long. But there seems to be a few people out there who know who RT currently is. For now, I will see if this video finds its way back to RT Sharpshooter. I would like to give my thanks directly. RT Sharpshooter is not the only link to the origins of the series, though. Remember, the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk was not RT's project alone. There was also Hyconophistorosticate. As of just three months ago, good thing I waited to make this video, this comment appeared on episode 10 of Sao. Hyconophistorosticate here, the former writer and collaborator on the series. This was actually my first gig writing scripts. Now, I write scripts for a living and work in the entertainment industry. It all started here. Could it be? Is this comment actually Hikon? Isolated alone, it is questionable, but searching other videos on RT's channel, one can find comments from the same channel from 13 years ago. This is highly likely Hikon's original channel, just renamed, one of the original writers of Sao. At least there is more than enough to substantiate this is Hikon of Fisterosticate. But let this serve as a conclusion for now. Even to this day, new comments are appearing on RT Sharpshooter's videos, asking the unanswered question, when's the next episode of Hunk? The channel still gets dozens of views a day. Now, that does not sound like much comparatively, but RT Sharpshooter's channel is buried deep in the algorithm. People have to go out of their way to find these videos from 2007 to 2009. If one watches these videos, it will begin to unearth other classic gems forgotten in the recommendations. Credit to the poster formerly known as Ori Man 101 for always asking, when's the next episode? This video, let it be a kind of memorial for not only the super awesome adventures of Hunk, but every forgotten YouTube series from 2007 that never really made it. Or at least had that brief, glorious blip of personality and popularity. It is an odd anachronism that has survived decades of YouTube format changes and interface alterations. It was a crude oil that could have been converted into gasoline if given enough time for that skill to develop. The internet never got to see a truly optimized form of the super awesome adventures of Hunk. Imagine an alternate timeline where this series sits right up there next to, I don't know, uh, Red vs. Blue and Sanity not included. These old series are still out there, turning to hidden gems under the online pressure of decades. 
Next time on the Super Awesome Adventures of Hunk. Will Ashley survive the parasite removal process? Will Ada complete her mission? Will Krauser land a date to the Autumn Harvest Dance? Will Leon get his place back in the spotlight? Will Hunk face his most epic battle yet? The answers to these questions. The answer to all of them is yes, if you were wondering. I'd like to give a super awesome thank you to my supporter, the Gel Somini family. And foul software. And have fun.